you have to have real confidence and your confidence comes from working hard. Amanda Lorenz, I've been dying to get you on the show and you're here. I'm so excited to have you on. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm glad we <laughs> can make it work. You know, ever since we had our COVID quarantine live chat on Instagram, I'm like, this girl needs to come on the show. And I need to just definitely say this out loud. Congratulations. You're officially you. Team USA. How Thank does it you. how does it all feel? Um, I was super shocked but I'm really thankful for the opportunity. <clears throat> Definitely excited. Um, growing up, it was like the biggest dream of mine and felt like um, a must have that I was going to accomplish that. So um, I'm definitely excited for my, for my eight-year-old self who would just have like died to know that I, had, I was gonna get a jersey with my name on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for her because cause that was everything to me at one point. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. So excited. Um, I just realized I wasn't plugged in here, so this is better. Um, can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. Hang on one second. I just forgot my mic is going to hear it from my computer. This has been a minute since I've done an interview. <laughs> um, let's see. Sorry. We definitely got the first part though, which is exciting. Okay. Um, select mic. No, I have the mic. I need the speaker. Okay. Here we go. I wasn't planning on wearing the big headphones today, but <laughs> y'all first interview of 2022. Let's go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love us. Okay. Um, Yes, there is so much to be excited about. Like when I think about some of my favorite hitters of all time, you come to mind and it's not because you have like what I would say is like this majestic, beautiful swing. No, it's about your competitiveness in the box. Like literally, if I could think of one person who's going to get the job done, I would want you on my team. So from watching you play at Florida to watching you compete for the pride and now get to compete for Team USA this is going to be so fun to watch you. So where, where's Team USA playing this year? So they are competing in Canada Cup, in the World Games, in Birmingham, Alabama, and then also going to Japan in August. So um, the Canada Cup and the Japan Series conflict with Athletes Unlimited. Mm. Um, so I am just going to be competing with Team USA for the World Games. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So you guys are just going to have to scrimmage a ton. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I'm excited to, to follow you. And I know listeners, they're always itching for, for things to follow. And this is going to be so fun to watch you compete. Um, crazy to think of just like how different the team looks now. And I'm excited to watch the dynamic. It's um, definitely different. Yeah. So what I love to do with uh, first timers on the show is to have you kind of share your journey through the game from when you started to where you are now. And Take as long as you need. I know it's a pretty okay. cool story. Cool. Um, yeah, so I grew up like, and I was just a crazy competitive kid. Um, and so my parents put me in softball when I was five, trying to channel all of that crazy energy positively. Um, I had a lot of older neighbors on my street and they were a lot of boys that were just really awesome and patient with me and let me just get after it when we would just play like games in the street. Um, and so they knew I was just really competitive. And um, so they put me in softball and I loved it. I always just like was crazy in love with the game. Um, definitely found my passion super young. So I'm really thankful that, you know, my parents pushed me to channel all of that craziness um, positively and just um, learned all of my life lessons truly um, through through the sport of softball. But so I just kept playing and playing and playing. Started travel ball when I was around 12. Um, I played for the Bat Busters out of Orange County. Um, and I grew up in Ventura County in, in Moore Park. So that's about a two hour drive to Orange County and um, through wow. LA. So mm -hmm. through LA traffic. Um, and so when I was in seventh grade, my parents, um, we decided that I was really serious and knew that I probably wanted to play in college. And that was mm -hmm. the best opportunity for me to get better was going down to Orange County and playing for Mike Stiff and, and um, playing against the best and figuring out a way to get better. And it was by far the best 
decision of my softball career was figuring out a way to push myself and be around these elite athletes um, and started the recruiting process quick. Um, I committed to Florida my freshman year of high school. Um, and I just, I always dreamed of going to UCLA. Honestly, I was like, grew up 40 minutes outside of UCLA. I went to so many games, like all of the players were, were my favorite players. And, um, I just really thought that I was just going to show up one day on campus and like be on the softball team, like from a young age, like I didn't know about the recruiting process and this and that. I just really thought like I a hundred percent, I was going to be a Bruin. Then going through the recruiting process, I really clicked with coach Walton really quickly got to campus fell in love with Florida and the rest is history. I've, I've loved my experience. I'm obviously still at Florida. I'm the volunteer assistant now. Um, and I'm not leaving until they kick me out. Yeah, they better not. Like, let's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like joke say. around when people ask like how long I'm going to stay. I'm like, I'm just going to keep putting in my fingerprint. And when my fingerprint stops working, I'm going to know that that's coach Walton saying like, okay, it's time. time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you get to, to share your knowledge with, you know, some girls that you've probably played with. And, um, that transition for me was tough to be able to like coach my old teammates because mm -hmm. that was tough for me, but I think it was probably a fun dynamic for you. Cause you got to actually like, see what actually goes on in, in coach Walton's head and, and get to yeah. know how he coaches. And, and I know you have massive respect for him. Mm -hmm. Um, quick question. When you were young, did you just play softball? I played soccer, um, up until like I was getting more competitive in softball. Once I started travel ball, I stopped playing soccer. Um, and then one of my like all-star teams, which we like kind of play together year round, like fall ball and stuff, we decided to take a fall off and play basketball instead of playing fall softball. Mm. And so I played one fall of basketball, but it was terrible like I would just like foul and travel and I was just awful and I yeah. hated it yeah but it was cool that like as a group we were like let's do something like different mm -hmm. to hope that like we wouldn't get burnt out um but that burn burning out was never in the cards for me I'm a yeah. psychopath you know it's crazy because I've never asked this question before I've had a lot of athletes from warm states on and they play softball like all throughout the year and same thing, like they don't feel burnout. Like some kids I'm noticing right now are feeling that burnout. Like mm -hmm. how, how do you think you avoided it? What advice would you give to people maybe feeling that? Well, I think that if you are experiencing burnout, like it might be that you don't really love the game, like, mm. which is totally fine. Like, I'm not like saying that in a negative way, but I just have never gone to practice and didn't want to be there. Like yeah. I, there was never a time where I was like, dying like like I can't believe I have another week of softball like it was like truly like I loved every single day of practice and games and getting up early and, and getting after it I think that's because I felt most like myself and most mm. like um accepted by the people around me like I just felt like I fit in with softball where like growing up I just I definitely felt different like than yeah. the girls at my school and just like I definitely felt different. Like I didn't feel like as outward about like sharing my passion for softball, like, especially as I am now, I, I guess I just didn't feel like it was that cool, mm -hmm. I guess, because it wasn't like normal. And sure. then when I found my travel ball teammates in Orange County, it was like, okay, these are my best friends. Like they, and like, we might fight, but I know that they get me and I get them. And I hadn't felt that, you know what I mean? Especially from like girls growing up. We just didn't share the same level of like, um, devotion to softball. Like yeah. I had no problem missing birthday parties and sleepovers. Like that didn't like hurt me. Totally. So I guess that's where like the burnout comes from. And it's all about priorities. And I think when like, when love your love for things like also leads and like aligns with your priorities, it's just a different level of work and like excitement every day. So like, if you love what you're doing, you're not going to get burned out. Right. That's a really good point. It's so funny. Yesterday I was telling my, one of my athletes, the same exact thing. It's like, when you love something, that's like you eat and breathe it. And I didn't really get along with many people from my school either. And that was just life. Like I didn't fit in. I was actually really quiet in high school. And then I got to college and I got to be with other people who had the same passion for me, spent their whole life trying to get good at softball. And wow. it's like, I love it. But mm -hmm. I, I will say there was an experience where I had like a coach that 
really kind of made me dislike the game, which did lead me to like overthinking and thinking, do I really love this? Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that's, that may be what some people are feeling too. Yeah. Um, like if they have a bad experience with a coach or like they're on a team that's petty and like, really like they don't love it, which is they're trying to get you to not love it. Like, I think that's where people can maybe feel that burnout. Um, and that's where I always say like, where, where are your priorities? Like, do you want to be on a team where there's other people passionate to play? Or do you just want to be on a team to fit in? Like there's a Mm -hmm. complete, like, you got to figure that out. And I think there's a lot of, it's okay if like you choose one or the other, like you just have to be okay with your decision and you're, and you're all in like being happy is, is most important. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, did you grow up? And I know you said you went to like UCLA games all the time. Mm-hmm. That was like me in Notre Dame. I was like, I'm going to Notre Dame. Like this is happening. <laughs> um, but did you have like specific role models that led you into loving the game and players that maybe you wanted to, to be like growing up? Yeah, um, definitely every player on the 2008 Olympic team. Yes. Like I feel like my dream of playing for Team USA was was apparent before my dream of like going to play at UCLA. Yeah. Um, I remember vividly going to the Bound for Beijing tour and like just being in awe of watching Team USA. They were playing UCLA, so it was at Easton Stadium. Um, and I just, I love, always have loved Jenny Finch, like, she's probably my number one, mm-hmm. but like all of them, like Jessica Mendoza, Lovey Jung, Natasha Watley, like seriously, all of them like had such an impact on me um, from like such a young age. I just thought that they were so unbelievable and I wanted to, to do what they did. Um, yeah. But Jenny, every time I met her, she just like had a way of making me feel so important and that I could accomplish anything that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I like, will never forget the way that she made me feel. And I know that she just made every fan that came up to her, like feel that exact same way. And so then once like I got to Florida and started having these autograph lines and like never to the, to the level that Jenny Finch had, but like in my own way, I was like, I want to like make these kids feel like how I felt. Like if I could give them just like an ounce of what she gave me, like who knows what they'll accomplish in the game because I can't say enough of like what that team did for my dreams and my goals. Uh, you're a perfect ambassador for the game. This is why I'm just so <laughs> excited that you're on Team USA. Like, <laughs> thank you. Jenny thank Finch, you. I don't know if you've talked to her yet, but we got to get you two in touch right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I like tagged her in my photo when I made the team because I like posted a picture yeah. of me like yes. with her and um, in that 2008 year. Yes. And um, she commented on it and I like died and she... And she followed me and I was like, uh, like, I literally like, I was like, oh my, I literally like, I'm friends with some of those Olympians now. Like, it's so cool to like have their numbers in my phone, but Jenny Finch still seems like a, like a distant, like celebrity. To me. Yes. Yes. I think like to all of us, um, but now yeah. she's following you. So um, let's, let's just like walk in the path of Amanda Lorenz. Let's follow, let's follow that. I love it. Um, okay. So last time we talked on Instagram, you talked about like hitting and hitting is my jam too. I love talking about the competitiveness of it. Um, but one thing that you mentioned was that you said, I always try to worry about me. Mm -hmm. I don't try to worry about the other team. I don't try to worry about anything else. Um, take me through that, that sentence and, and how that approach works for you. So I think that your confidence is number one, number one, but like, and confidence is re- like, you have to have real confidence and your confidence comes from working hard. Mm-hmm. And so then I translate that to game time. Like if I'm like preparing in the week and I'm only worried about like what I need, then that's going to be consistent every single week. So mm-hmm. if I know that I have like my best game, that's all I need to be successful because it's really hard for me to give pitchers credit unless <laughs> they've earned it. So there's like very few pitchers in my career that I've like given permission for them to like adjust my plan. Mm -hmm. And so I have to adjust for them because my plan, my normal plan doesn't work on someone like her. Therefore I'll adjust, but everybody else, if I can keep it consistent and only worry about me and focus on my A swings and attack my strengths, then it's going to be so much easier to go in with a plan of attack, but it's harder when you're changing your plan every single time, like Based how on do you, the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Based on the picture. How do you, how do you become that bought in and like that good at every single one like for me it's much better just to attack one be super good at it 
okay, then I don't really need to adjust my plan much um, unless the pitchers earned it. Yeah. That's so, so well said. So what does your process look like? What does your routine look like? What are some of the phrases you say to yourself for an at bat? Yeah, I think that um, my process has probably changed a little mm-hmm. bit since college um, going into the professional game. But in college, I mean, I like spent hours. I, I had all online classes and it was like, I loved the fact that I could go to the fields and hit whenever I wanted. I loved that I could show up to practice three hours early and have me time in the cages and no one was there to bother me. And I could like spend an hour on the tee by myself Mm -hmm. and take my time. Like I just loved the tee. And so I wasn't a huge, like stay after practice person, but I was a huge, like get there early person. Like I definitely got there early and hit off of the tee before early hit started. If like we had some early hit that day. Um, and like, that was what I needed. Like I needed to take my time on the tee and like, that was always my reset. So I think like, um, but the number of swings that I need now compared to in college is different. Like, I mean, my body's different. I know (laughs) that if I have 50 swings and like, I need 20 off of the tee, they're going to be the best 20 of the day. It's not going to be like in college where it was like 20 to warm up 50 to feel good a mm. hundred more to like, you know, I feel like I've just honed in a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but I think like still to this day and like my whole softball career, the tee has been my number one of resetting myself and just being so intentional off of the tee to make sure every swing matters and every swing counts. Yeah. I love that. And I love the tea so much that I'm glad you love it too. I love it. I like, I, especially when I work with youth athletes, I try to like, I'm like, please fall in love with the tea, like figure out how to fall in love with the tea and make it intentional, play games with yourself. Like, please like just figure out a way to love it because I promise you it's going to be so, so impactful for the rest of your career. hundred percent. So when you're hitting in the cage, you start off the tea, then where do you go? Um, front toss and then I will hit live, but like, I am a big, like off of the tee, my strength is that I can hit the other way, like consistently. So Mm -hmm. I uh, pride myself the fact that like I'm an opposite field hitter hitter. So because that's my strength, I will start with my strength. So every day off of the tee, I will start with outside. I'll move middle, go to inside because that's not my strongest, and then I'll end with outside. So I'll, while I will address my weakness, I'm not spending 90% of the time on my weakness because why would I spend 90% of the time on something that doesn't make me me? Because if sometimes if I sacrifice too much of my swing on my weakness, so like a down and in pitch, if I'm focusing so much on down and in, that's going to change my strength, which is my, my outside, my go the other way swing. Mm -hmm. So I love to like attack it but I want to spend most of the time on something that I'm really good at. Like I'm not neglecting it, but I don't want to adjust my swing to hit that down and in pitch because my average might go from 400 to 300. If I'm focused too much on that one pitch. Right. Who taught you that strategy? Coach Wong. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think that approach is so cool. And I remember you talking also about how there was a team, a teammate you had at Florida. I think she might've been older than you. And I feel that what was her name? What was her name? Um, you talked about her last time, Kaylee Kavisca. Kavisca? Yeah. So you're talking about how you're built the same, but like your swings are different and she loves, I think maybe the inside pitch Mm -hmm. and like, it's just not your thing. And the way you approach it looks different than her, but you both were like 400 hitters. Like you both Mm -hmm. were extremely successful. And I think it goes down to that. It's like knowing yourself, knowing your strengths, playing to your strengths instead of trying to play to somebody else's. And yep. that's the beauty of hitting. Everybody's different. Everybody thinks different, ah. man. I, I want to talk about hitting for another hour, but I need to be <laughs> conscious of your time. So for the people that have fallen in love with you in this brief amount of time with you, where can they follow you? Where can they keep following your journey with Jenny Finch on probably Instagram? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Amanda Lorenz. Um, I'm on Twitter a little bit too. I don't post this frequently as I do on Instagram, but on Twitter, I'm at Amanda Lorenz 18. Let's go. Are you going to be 18 for Team USA? I am. Oh, yeah. I'm so so excited. So I'll be playing (laughs) with Team USA this summer. We'll be playing in the World Games in Birmingham, Alabama. And then I will be playing with Athletes Unlimited this summer at AUX and um, championship season. Let's go. I'm so excited to follow that. 
and follow you. Okay, let's wrap up with five to thrive rapid fire. You ready? Okay. Yep. Okay. Favorite part of the game? Go. Hitting. Duh. Uh, <laughs> toughest pitcher you've ever faced, and why? Ooh, Monica Abbott. Um, because she throws a hundred miles per hour and it's a lucky <laughs> curveball and it just seems impossible to hit. And now she's your teammate. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> I hate facing her. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what's your favorite thing that your parents taught you? Ooh, to respect everyone. Good answer. You definitely are going at the rapid fire. I'm into this. Okay. What advice would you give younger Amanda? Uh, just keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> I think going. that like she like at times you're my advice would be like, you're so cool because I think at times like when I felt super different, yeah. I didn't know like what this journey would take me on. Um right. And I, I felt different, like sometimes in a bad way, like mm -hmm. that. I just, I just felt like, you know, no boy would ever like me. And I'm just like too boyish and too like, and I, I don't know. And I'm like, then in high school, I got like literally the most amazing boyfriend and we're still together and like, who just totally gets me and is my best, best friend. And I wish I knew that like, I would be totally fine and just the coolest. Like I, <laughs> like I was so cool and I didn't know it. Yeah. You are the coolest, by the way. Thanks. So are you. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Uh, okay. <laughs> Before I ask the final question, I just need to thank you for, for coming on. And I think we oh need gosh, to do a part course. two so we could talk yes. more about hitting and your approach because we do need I'm, a part two. I'm excited to dive into that. Um, flew by. I, it really did. But I cannot <laughs> wait. And I know listeners right now cannot wait to follow you this summer. It's going to be such a blast. Um, you're just one of the best competitors I've ever seen in the box. And I'm so excited for other people to see this, um, which who doesn't know Amanda Lorenz is my <laughs> question, but Thank everybody you. needs to know you. All right. <laughs> final, final question. What legacy would you like to leave on the game? Um, I would just like to be known as someone who just loved the game every single day. And you could see it in the way that I played. Like, I just hope that I'm remembered for my passion and my spot and my smile, um, for playing the game and just looking like I was always having fun. Well, I can attest to that. You always do look like you're having fun. And I think through this interview, people know that you love and have so much passion for the game. You're so inspiring. I'm so excited for you this summer and everybody go give Amanda a follow. <laughs> awesome. Thanks guys. Thanks for having me, Ash. Uh, thanks for coming on, girlfriend. <laughs>